Welcome to the World Brief. AP Week in Pictures, Asia. Associated Press. The Associated Press has curated a photo gallery of compelling images from Asia in the past week. Some of the highlights include a horse rider holding a Mongolian flag during a cultural event for Pope Francis' visit to Mongolia, revelers paying respect before forming human pyramids to reach an earthen pot during the Hindu festival Jamishtami in Mumbai, and Pope Francis presiding over a mass at the Steppe Arena in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. The photos were selected by AP photo editor Maseo Yoshida in Tokyo and can be found on Instagram, Twitter, and the AP Images blog. UN goal of achieving gender equality by 2030 is impossible because of biases against women, UN says. Associated Press. Achieving gender equality by 2030 is impossible due to deep-rooted biases against women in health, education, employment, and power, according to a report by UN Women and the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. The report highlights active resistance to gender equality, chronic underinvestment, and unequal access to sexual and reproductive health, among other issues, as the main barriers to progress. It also notes that women's access to education is still limited, with up to 129 million girls and young women potentially out of school globally in 2023. Planning to miss Australia's series against West Indies, Healy named Skipper. ABC. Cricket Australia, CA has announced that captain Meg Lanning will not play in the upcoming T20 and ODI series against West Indies due to ongoing medical reasons. Alyssa Healy will serve as captain in Lanning's absence. Lanning had previously missed the Ashes series and the ODI series against Ireland for medical reasons. CA's medical team has determined that Lanning is still unavailable for selection, and her return to play is uncertain. Healy, who captained Australia during the Ashes series, will again lead the team. Elise Perry, who was also injured during the Ireland series, is expected to be available for the West Indies series. The T20 series begins on October 1, followed by three ODI matches. Parts of Greece have recorded an entire year's worth of rain in 18 hours, a month after heatwaves and fire. What's caused it? ABC. Greece and Southern Europe have been hit by heavy rain and flooding that has killed at least 14 people. Climate scientists believe the extreme weather has been caused by high ocean temperatures, a situation that has transformed a common weather occurrence into a potent source of energy. Oceans in the Mediterranean remain well above average temperatures, with the high heat likely to have intensified the effects of the weather. The UK, meanwhile, is in the grip of a heat wave, with the hottest day of the year forecast for Saturday. Indonesia poised to resume live cattle imports from Australia. ABC. Australian live exports of cattle to Indonesia are set to resume after Prime Minister Anthony Albanese discussed the issue with President Joko Widodo. While no formal agreement has been reached, positive discussions have taken place, and further meetings are scheduled. The trade has been suspended since late July when Indonesia stopped importing live cattle from four Australian export facilities due to cases of lumpy skin disease. Malaysia also suspended live cattle imports but lifted the ban earlier this week. The resumption of the trade would be a relief for the industry, as Australian exports of beef and cattle to Indonesia were worth almost $900 million in 2021-22. King releases poignant tribute to late Queen on first anniversary of her death. Telegraph. King Charles III has paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth II on the first anniversary of her death. In a message, the King expressed gratitude for the public support shown to him and Queen Camilla during the first year of his reign. A portrait of the late Queen, taken in 1968, was released to mark the anniversary. The King will spend the day privately in reflection at Balmoral, where his mother spent her final weeks, before her death in 2022. Prince Harry, who arrived in London for the Wellchild Awards, is not expected to see his father or brother before flying to Germany for the Invictus Games. FIFA challenge to hit target of 30% female representation on decision-making bodies. Telegraph. The Women in Football Network has challenged FIFA and football's continental confederations to increase the number of women in decision-making positions to at least 30 percent. The move follows a sexism row involving Spain's now-suspended football federation president, Luis Rubiales, and World Cup-winning forward Jenny Hermoso. According to a Women in Football survey, 82 percent of women working in football have experienced gender-based discrimination, up from 66 percent three years ago. The network wants organizations to set targets for gender representation and to incorporate measures dealing with abuse into football's governing body rules. China EV battery maker EVE invests 150 million US dollars in US joint venture. South China Morning Post. Chinese electric vehicle, EV, battery producer EVE Energy has partnered with Daimler Truck, 
Electrified Power and PACAR to build a factory in the U.S. The $2.64 billion plant will develop and manufacture lithium-ion phosphate batteries for commercial vehicles, with the three partners the venture's major customers. EVE will invest $150 million for a 10% stake in the joint venture, while the other three companies will each hold a 30% stake. EVE is the fourth-largest EV battery manufacturer in China, which is home to six of the top ten producers. Court grants temporary stay allowing Texas to keep Rio Grande barriers in place. Reuters. A U.S. appeals court has granted a temporary stay allowing Texas to keep floating buoys in the Rio Grande to block migrants from crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. This comes after a U.S. judge ordered Texas to move the buoys, which was seen as a win for President Joe Biden, who had sued the state. The temporary stay means Texas does not have to immediately move the barriers. The buoys are part of Governor Greg Abbott's efforts to deter migrants, along with razor wire placed along the riverbank. Abbott's border operations have faced criticism after allegations emerged that authorities were pushing migrant children back into the river and denying water to migrants in extreme heat. Top global ports may be unusable by 2050 without more climate action report. Reuters. Some of the world's largest ports may be rendered inoperable by 2050 due to rising sea levels, according to the Global Maritime Trends 2050 report. The report, commissioned by Lloyd's Register and Lloyd's Register Foundation, warned that one-third of the world's 3,800 ports were in areas particularly vulnerable to climate change. Ports including Shanghai, Houston and Lazaro Cardenas in Mexico could be affected by a 40 cm rise in sea levels. The report also called for increased investment in port infrastructure, particularly in areas most at risk. Shipping is responsible for 3% of global CO2 emissions. Japan real wages fall for 16th straight month in July. Reuters. Japanese real wages have fallen for the 16th consecutive month in July due to salaries not keeping up with rising prices. Inflation-adjusted real wages fell 2.5% in July compared to the previous year following a 1.6% slump in June. The Bank of Japan has stated that sustainable wage rises are a prerequisite for deciding whether to pull back on its ultra-loose monetary stimulus. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has called on companies to boost wages and the government is accelerating efforts to compile new stimulus steps to counter rising inflation. Nominal pay growth slowed to 1.3% in July after a 2.3% rise in June and a 2.9% hike in May. Overtime pay rose 0.5% in July, compared to a 1.9% rise in June, while special payments increased 0.6%. North Korea says it has launched a new nuclear attack submarine to counter U.S. naval power. Associated Press. North Korea has announced that it has launched a nuclear attack submarine, named Hiro Kim kun -ok. This is a significant move for the country in its efforts to build a nuclear-armed navy and counter the United States and its Asian allies. The vessel is designed to launch tactical nuclear weapons from underwater, but the number of missiles it can carry and fire has not been specified. North Korea has previously tested various missiles that are designed to be fired from submarines, and is also pursuing a nuclear-propelled submarine. The country is planning to remodel existing submarines and surface vessels in order to handle nuclear weapons. North Korea says it has produced a tactical nuclear attack submarine. Washington Post. North Korea has claimed to have launched a new tactical nuclear attack submarine capable of preemptive and retaliatory strikes, according to the country's leader Kim Jong-un. The claim is difficult to verify, but North Korea has a history of boasting about achievements it has not yet accomplished. The submarine, named the hero Kim kun -ok, is said to be one of the core underwater offensive means of the country's naval force. The launch coincided with the day of the foundation of the Republic, celebrated on September 9 in North Korea. UK to urge India to call out Russia over Ukraine crisis FT. Reuters. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will reportedly urge Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to call out Russia over its invasion of Ukraine at the upcoming G20 summit. Sunak will attend the summit in New Delhi this weekend and is expected to discuss progress in a trade deal between the UK and India. He will also discuss progress towards circumventing Russia's Black Sea grain blockade with G20 leaders. Russia sent tens of thousands of troops into Ukraine last year. Biden and Modi to make progress on GE jet engines, nuclear, White House. Reuters. The White House is anticipating progress on GE jet engines and civil nuclear technology in discussions between President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. General Electric's aerospace unit had previously announced a partnership with India's Hindustan Aeronautics to produce engines for the Indian Air Force. Thank you for tuning in.
The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.